What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about a free add-on that's already contained inside of Blender that can help you create more realistic landscapes inside of your models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is a tool that's actually contained inside of Blender. You shouldn't have to download anything in order to enable this. So in order to enable it, you can just go up to Edit, Preferences, and under your add-ons, you're gonna do a search for a.n.t landscape. And so it's gonna look like this. Note that you need to put the periods in there for this to show up. But basically this stands for another noise tool dot landscape. So what this is, is a tool that allows you to add a landscape mesh and then edit it inside of Blender. So once you've enabled this, then we'll go ahead and delete out our default model. You can add a landscape mesh by doing a shift A in object mode and under meshes, you're now gonna have the option for landscape. And so when you add a landscape, what it's gonna do is it's basically gonna add in a landscape that's generated using noise inside of Blender. And so this has a ton of different options that you can use in order to create different kinds of landscapes. And so the first thing I would recommend is I would recommend taking a look at some of the presets that are up above. So these are really good for giving you something to kind of, um, kind of build off of. So like for example, your default, it's using noise in order to create a mountain. Well, if you click on these uh, presets, you can see how there's a ton of different options that you can select. So for example, you can add things like canyons. So if you look at this, you can see how there's a preset in here for canyons. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn my wireframe on just so you can see the geometry that's being created in here um, so that you can kind of see what this is doing. But there's options in here for things like lakes. So you can generate a landscape with a lake. Um, so it comes with an actual water plane as well as a landscape plane. There's options in here for like sand dunes and other things like that. And these are all adjustable, which we'll talk about in a minute. There's also some more interesting ones, like there's options in here to create things like planets and other things like that. Um, for right now though, what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at the option for large terrain. So I think that gives us a good idea of kind of what this can create. So you can see how what this is doing is it's just generally creating a large terrain inside of Blender. And so one cool thing about this is as you change these, they're gonna update in real time, assuming you have the option in here for auto or automatic ref refresh selected. I'm gonna skip over these first couple options. You can set this to triangulate these faces in, instead of creating uh, quads if you want it to. Um, I personally don't wanna do that, but you do have the option in here to do that. So you can also name the mesh that's created and apply a material to it. And so this first section, the main settings, is going to adjust how large your mesh is as well as how many subdivisions are in here. So we've talked about subdividing in the past, but basically the number of subdivisions is going to set the amount of detail in here. So for example, if I was to drop this down to 64 subdivisions, you can see how I get a lot less detail in here, um, which can perform a lot better, but it's also going to look a bunch, a lot chunkier. So on the other hand, if we were to go up higher, so maybe like 500 by 500, you can see how I get a much more complex mesh in here, but you can see how my performance is also being affected by that. So you need to kind of find the balance in here um, between having enough detail that this looks good, and, but not so much that you've got a ton of geometry in here that's gonna slow everything down. And so the second option is something we can use in order to adjust the size of the mesh that's created. So for example, and I'm gonna bring these subdivisions back to, we'll start with 256 for right now. The mesh size is gonna adjust the entire size of the whole mesh that's created. So for example, if I was to type in a value of 40, you can see how this is then gonna create a mesh that's 40 long instead of 20. So you can adjust how large this is by adjusting your mesh size option. And notice that the noise that's being used to create this, um, this landscape is being applied across this whole thing. So this adjusts as we make our adjustments inside of our settings live. So that's how you can adjust the size of the mesh that's being created. Now, down below, you can adjust the settings for the noise. So the noise settings affect the way that noise is being applied in here. So it's basically the pattern that's being applied in here in order to create your mesh. Now, one thing that can get kind of annoying about this is if you ever like orbit around and then you click outside of this, um, your menu is gonna go away. And so that can get really frustrating because if you're making changes, um, 
and you're not quite done, it can be really frustrating because you can't really get that back. Now, if you haven't done anything else, so if you don't do anything else that's considered an action in Blender, you could try tapping the F9 key or by going up to edit, adjust last operation. And so if you do that, this may pop this window back up. So you may be able to get it back um, by doing that. Now, if you can't do that, you can tap the N key and over here in your menu, there's an option for create. And a lot of these tools are contained inside of this menu. So you can come in here and make adjustments to that here. So one thing to note about that though, is let's say I was to adjust my mesh size. So if I was to adjust this to 40, you have to click on the button for regenerate. So it no longer live makes those changes in here. So what you really wanna do is you wanna try to get everything created when your menu is active. Um, try not to click off of it. Um, because then it can just get a little bit frustrating in order to get it to look the way that you want it to look. So just be aware of that and try to make all of your changes before you go off clicking inside of your workspace. So your noise settings are gonna adjust the way that the noise is creating this surface. So notice there's a lot of different options in here. A lot of the time what you're gonna do is you're gonna find yourself just kind of playing around with these in order to try to get the result that you want. Um, I will note that it's probably a little bit easier to uh, try to find a preset and then adjust that rather than uh, just randomly picking different noise um, different noise types in here but notice how there's a lot of different options in here that are going to generate a lot of different results so same thing with the second option you can see how there's just a lot of different mathematical formulas in here you can select to create different things. Um, but then note that down below this, there's options for actually being able to adjust this. So you can adjust the noise. You can offset that noise by using the X and Y offset. So you can adjust the way that this is being applied to your plane using these options. And then the size X and Y is going to kind of stretch these out a little bit. So you can see how as I apply this X and Y um, sizing, um, I'm getting different results in here as well so you can use this to kind of stretch and adjust these um, you need to be a little bit careful with those because things can start looking a little bit weird and distorted but a lot of it just depends on what you're trying to create so in addition you can adjust the size of that noise so if you turn your noise down you're gonna get a lot more ups and downs in here than if you were to turn it up so if you were to turn it up you you might use the up for more like hills and the down the lower noise size for more like mountain ranges and so you can use things like the depth to adjust how smooth this is. So more depth is going to equal more ups and downs. And these other things in here are going to adjust other things like that as well. So you can see how the dimension is also giving me more ups and downs. So just kind of play around with these to see what kind of result you can create. Note that there's also a number of different effects in here that you can apply in order to get different things as well. So the displacement settings are going to have more to do with how high up and down, so how tall things are going to go. So for example, if I adjust the height up, you can see how my ups and downs of this noise are going to be a little bit more pronounced. So you can use this in order to create taller hills or taller mountains or other things like that. You can also do a height invert. And what that'll do is instead of these going up, it's going to invert these down to give you more like canyons and other things like that instead. Um, one thing to note about this is you can also set a maximum height. So let's say I was to adjust this to a height of or my let's say I was to adjust my first height to something like two and a half and then I could set my maximum to limit how high the highs go so if I was to bring this down to something like two what this would do is this would cut off everything that goes up above two and it would give you some plateaus in here so you can use your maximum in here to adjust your plateaus you could do the same thing with your uh, minimum so if you wanted to for example, flatten everything out like this down below so you don't have a bunch of like way downs, um, you can do that using the minimum. One thing to note about that is it might be tempting to use this in order to create water. Um, I would say you probably don't wanna do that because there's an option later on for adding a water plane. Um, and then these other two options, the fall off is gonna adjust if uh, this goes all the way to the edge or if you were to select like an X, Y, what it would do is it would keep your edge flat and it would have like a fall off between what you have right here and your edges around the outside. And then your strata 
can be useful if you're trying to create more like rocky or canyon type things. Um, this will just adjust the way that this falls off between different points. So you can see how these are more vertical. So you can use this in order to create more canyon like things and things like that. And then finally, there's an option in here for a water plane. So if you decide, for example, that you want to have water in here, generally what you want to do is you want to apply a plane, which this allows you to do, that kind of shows through your mesh, kind of like this. And notice that you can adjust your level in here. But what you can do is you can use this to apply a water really quickly to your landscapes. And then you could apply like a water shader to this or something like that. And we can talk about that in a future video if you guys are interested. So all in all, this is a pretty quick, easy way to create landscapes inside of Blender. Um, I will create a separate tutorial on how to apply materials to these because this video is getting a little bit long. But if you're looking for a way to apply or create the meshes, this is a great way to do that. We can also talk about how to create and apply a water shader in the future as well. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this video? Have you used this uh, add-on? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.